I'm here to tell you a story. When we moved here from, from Darwin in 2015, we, we, bought, uh, we were moving into our new house and we bought the block next door so we had an acre of land. And what I'd been dying to do all of my life was design a garden with little weavy paths and you know, all sorts of nice interesting stuff. I had a vision here. I had a vision of a large veggie patch with extended native gardens and chooks. All of my life I wanted chooks. And he had a vision of grass, grass and more grass <laughs> and a ride on mower. <laughs> so he gave me the ride on mower for my birthday in 2015. <laughs> and I think I've had three rides on it. <laughs> Two of them I got something tangled out in that blade thing that runs around underneath. <laughs> Not very popular. <laughs> this block of land used to be uh, the, the, the feedlot for the, for the cattle going off to the abattoirs, you know. So they'd been stomp, 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 stomp around it. So it, we had nice solid clay that you just couldn't get a crowbar into it. And, and it was hot and it was windy and we had flies. Flies. Now, four million flies cannot be wrong. So we had moved into the bright place. I had never seen flies that crawled around on the floor. Like ants, they were all different. So what flies that were walking around in the grass? But they had been here for so long and they were expecting to see a cow any minute. <laughs> <laughs> so what I needed to do was a bit of a spot of research. So I thought if I research the temperature, the wind, and what we could do perhaps for some wind breaks. So I started on that. But I also needed to do some more, some more research. I had to research how, how to get the veggies to grow and, and how to get the natives to grow and how to look <coughs> after chooks. In the Gospel according to Gardening Australia, <laughs> <laughs> in the Gospel according to Gardening Australia, well, they have an app for for um, for doing your, for planting your vegetables, and you you just they, you can't plant the right wrong vegetable on the right day. You know, if it's not in season, you can't do it. So you go in there, and it and it pops up in your calendar. It says harvest today. I thought, oh, beauty, it's only about this far out of the ground. <laughs> <laughs> So we don't always agree on these things, really. But it's a really good app, because it won't let you. Now, we were talking about the weather before, and the winter weather. So this is, I, I had to research the weather to find out what were the hot times, and what were the really hot times, and how hot does it actually get sometimes. You know, some months, some years, it's hotter than others. So the coldest ever, for those who don't like the winter, is 2.2 on the 17th of May in 1960. And just as a matter of fact, 1960 in May was also the coldest month they'd ever had. Yeah, but the warmest weather, the warmest was in 2021. And the warmest May was in 2016. Now, yeah, this is my second round of research. Also, does the veggie patch, the natives, and the chooks. So we have veggie patches. Now, I found out from Gardening Australia that if you put your, your vegetables in different plots, so I've got four garden beds there, and each garden bed you rotate it every year, so you don't. You don't plant the same family of vegetable in the same place year after year because they have different nitrogen, different fertiliser sort of things. So you put them, mine are numbered, one to four, and this is our first, our first crop. And I've got split, I've got snow peas and green peas, snap peas, and I've got parsnips. And then I've got a rogue tomato came up. And then another rogue tomato. So I've got two tomatoes in the parsnips. <laughs> Serious. <laughs> and also I've got growing some um, spinach and uh, what else? all sorts of good things. 
but they're in the different. They're, they're in, so I'm, I'm using half a bed of each of the four to get these these things in. Now this garden here on the other side. So I've got to keep changing sides so you can see that this garden is on its side <laughs> <laughs> because it went that way on the slideshow and I didn't know how to get it back again. <laughs> I would check no wins, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so that site used to be, that was the site of the first chook shed. <laughs> and we moved the chook shed from one side of the yard to the other side of the yard. And we had three very bewildered looking little white chooks who couldn't find their way home because the chook shed was there when they got up this morning and in the afternoon, <laughs> stand the other end, I said, come on, come on, come on. Oh, poor little <laughs> But that was it. So where we where we had had the chooks, put the garden in. Well, I did. I did all the garden, and it, we got a bumper crock of, crock of of pumpkins. And I didn't plant a single seed, but there were pumpkins all over the chooks. <laughs> but those things there, they're actually potatoes, and they were really, really nice. Yes. Yeah, so when, as I said, the the. The veggie patch went from one location to another location and the Gardening Australia app, the native garden. So this was what I was waiting for because I love native gardens and I truly believe that everybody should have a native, some sort of native tree. Our estate is Timbers Reserve out at Oakhurst and they call it Timbers Reserve, but they take, they took all the timbers down and reserved the bits of dirt, you know? <laughs> <laughs> they took down our best tree out the back, leaving the last week. So, <laughs> but in the streetscape, like, as, as lily pillies. You know, the, the developer put in lily pillies down the street, you know? So the residents move in and they go, oh, God, lily pillies, we'll put some more of those in, you know? Which are really good if you're in a bushfire. So if you, if you want to keep safe in a bushfire, grow lily pillies. But the, it's, you don't get a broad range of feed for your native birds. That's where, you know, and, and I believe that having um, built a new house on a vacant block of land, which is devoid of trees, that we have a responsibility to the birds. I mean, they're just carved up another, you know, another layer. So we have a responsibility to the birds and to the wildlife to give them something, give something back to them. But most of the new residents are put in more legally police and those other stupid things that st just stick out. I don't know what they are. They don't, they don't flower. They don't do anything. They just, they're just sort of there with. Oh, now this is my first garden here. 2015, I put this in. See, you can see this tiny little things here. The tiny little thing. And, 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 oh, I don't care. Now, this thing here, this thing, this is a pink thing. I don't know what it was called, but I got it from a native nursery. And, and I went, you know, and I bought a collection, so I have one of Yeah, okay, great. So I planted it there. And about six months later, it came up over there. <laughs> And then there was another one over here. And I said, listen here you, I'm in charge of this garden and you're going because I don't want anything that's going to run rampant. You have to behave if you want to be in my garden. And this is what it looks like now. That tree, that's like, it's, it's quite big, but that, that is a, um, a Grevillea fire sprite, that tree there. And from my little office I can look out and, and look at that tree, which I do when I'm thinking of, what am I going to put in this next speech? I'll just look at the tree. <laughs> because it has all of these finches in it. It's out in flower at the moment, and the finches just love it. And I've got water up there for them, and, and um, uh, uh, a lemon myrtle, which hangs right over it so they can get in there and hide from the minor, the, the Indian minor birds that get in there. Now, this fire sprite tree, on the other side of the garden, which would be over here somewhere if the photo was big enough, <clears throat> and I looked out there one day, and my tree, which is the one I look at, had all of the finches in it. They were having a lovely time. Now, they've had some sweetheart agreement that they've drawn up with the minor birds, because the minor birds are all in the same tree on the other side. 
And that, they were, you know, and never to your mate. I thought, well, this is, how, how did they negotiate that with some deal of authenticity? I would have to say. <laughs> We need a windbreak garden, so I put the windbreak garden down on the Finch Street side. And this is how it started up. And I wandered down to the to Gimpy, because they have a land care. And I paid two dollars fifty each for these things. And I got a couple of great big trees. And I planted them and they do a great job of you know, dropping down the wind. And this is what it looks like now from the it's a recent photo of it. See, so the windbreak, you can, I took this off the street and you can see that there's, they're all different heights. You can have all different heights and widths. You can't have them, you know, not a big, thin, big, long row of lily blue. But to, to, put, to put in plants that grow, in it. and native, these natives, are, they grow really, really quickly. I was quite surprised. Oh, the mounds and the banks. Now these are some, I saw one of these in, in England when I, I was over there, and I thought it looked fabulous in a new community garden, this huge mound of soil with all of these plants. It, it was really, really pretty, really pretty. And I thought, oh, you could do that. You know, it does, that does its thing in, in breaking the wind down and whatever. But it can be expensive if you have to buy into the soil. But himself, with his vision of all grass, he, he doesn't. He, his, his his vision of all grass doesn't include any bends in the road. You know, it's all straight, straight. Yeah. I put in, I put in the native garden. He puts a fence around it. It's, he, put, he, he made this lovely surround for the for the one of the gardens that I got, and he concreted the little corner posts in there. You know, getting all pedantic, and I said to him one day, do you realise that the long posts, not, not the corn points, but the long, the long planks on the side, need to go. So once, you know, in about 10 years time, all we're going to have is up, up, uprights in the, in, in the grass. But anyway, he, that's his thing, he likes to do. Jocks. Yeah, there we are, in the Gospel according to Garth in Australia. If you're going to have chooks, you need to have wormwood which is a plant, and it, it, it grows uh, a metre wide and a metre high if you give it a good, a good pruning every year. Then you can take your pruning clippings and you can use them in the nesting boxes for the chooks. Very clever, very, very clever. Ah, oh, and here are our white chooks. These are the first chooks I ever got. Here they are, three white chooks. Escapees, they were escapees. They were really, really good at it. Now we've got an acre of land. Okay, listen here, Chooks, we've got an acre of land. What are you doing going next door? Hmm? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, they would go next door, you know, and they get into Kevin's garden. <laughs> <laughs> and Kevin would go, Hi, Patricia. I'll just get the rake, thanks, Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> no, the next door, rake his garden back up again. <laughs> But they also had a pecking order, and, and the pecking order seemed to be something to do with pecking each other. Because after a while, they're, you know, they're nice white feathers, they have no, no feathers here and no feathers on the bum and, and no feathers on the head. It was, it was scary and they looked very unwell, very unwell. And I thought, so I, I spoke to Sharon who I got them with from and I, I said, my chooks are looking really, really sick. They're still lame, but they look sick. And she said, I'll take them home, because she's got, you know, 40 chooks and they just... So they went and blended in with the other, made 43. And, and they got really well and healthy after a couple of months. But she brought them back and I went, oh, beauty, you know. So I had them for about a week and they're picking at each other and dragging their fe feathers out. And <laughs> I said, Sharon, is that my chooks? And she said, would you like me to give you three others? Oh, yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> so, this is the, the, the white chook residence. This was the, the chook house that we built and moved. This is the one that went to the other end of the, the other side. And we 
grew pumpkins in, in there. So that was their residence for the white chooks. But these are the ice of browns. So she, she brings me down three ice of browns and they were civil to each other. <laughs> they were really nice, you know, really pleasant. <laughs> And they didn't pluck feathers or pluck, they weren't you know, plucking anything. They were just, just being nice to, and giving us three eggs a day. Oh, fantastic. But then I got sick and I couldn't look after the chookies. So I sent the chookies back to Sharon. And occasionally Jeff says to me, when do you think we might get the chooks back? And I said, well, that lot of chooks are no longer lame. <laughs> They've grown out of lane, they've retired from lane. So there we go. So now we have a chook shed. This is our new chook shed that's, that's down where we moved the other the old one to. But you know, it's awaiting some new residents. And it's growing some serious weeds. <laughs> He's himself on his right on mower. There's a bend in the path there, I don't know how that happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, problems. We have some problems in it. Our problems, we have three domestic cats, they're not ours. Not, 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 not mine, not mine, I'm not guilty of having a cat. Or your cat lovers down there. I'm not guilty of having a cat. So, these two cats from across the road, one of them comes over and stalks after the, the finches sits under the fire sprite, just looking, sitting on the fence, just looking. When are they, when are one of those birdies going to fall into my mouth? Eh? <laughs> just what I want, just another birdie. <laughs> the one down the road has just moved in, much to the angst of the male who had been living in that house for some time, and his girlfriend moved in and bought her a cat, which has long, got long fur and three or four different colours. and. It's quite nice, and it, it spends its day sitting under the fire sprite, hoping something might happen. But she promised me, she assured me that that Shadow does not chase birds. But I don't think there's a cat on the thing that doesn't chase birds. So we have occasionally get flies. The flies sort of went after a while. They, they were there for the first couple of years. But anyway, the, we occasionally get them. Usually when the, the ground's being dug up somewhere, they'll, they'll come up and visit us. And the lack of paths. Now, these draw you to different things. Where Jeff's concerned, everything is sort of like all, all in a line, you know? What do you call it? Static or something, anyway. And anyway, he, he doesn't understand that I need a path. So I've got compost bins, chook shed, and veggie patches all over there, and I've got a shade house, and you know, I'm well equipped for it. But I don't have a path to get me from anywhere to anywhere, so I had to go out and buy this absolutely fabulous pair of gum boots, <laughs> a real pair of wellies, you know, they are green and they're really nice. That's what that, that was my right. Now, the reality is <coughs> that every day we get closer to getting the chooks back. I make sure that I try to meet the needs of the wildlife. Like if I if I cut if I prune anything, I'll I'll leave the cuttings up there so that the you know, little bits of wildlife have got something to hide, somewhere to hide. I've got plants that grow sometimes close to the ground so that the little birdies have somewhere to hide to get away. I have bird baths, several bird baths around in the various different gardens that I have there. So I remember to do that. And I take time every day to walk around my garden and have a look, just see what's happening. And I've got bulbs in pots, not the garden, bulbs in pots, just to remind me that it's springtime. And I love it. I love bulbs in pots. So I enjoy the birds. And of course, any garden is a, um, a work in progress. So, that's my garden. So remember, if you ever get to start a new garden, you, you really have a responsibility to replace some of those trees that get knocked out by developers. Oh, you know, we can get another four square inches out of this Michael land. 
So yes, please remember that. Whenever you're doing something in your, in your garden or you're designing your garden, remember that the birds and the wildlife are all out there and they're there for all of us and we take care of them. Madam, Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs>